I would like to share with those who see or hear these small and clumsy words of mine a testimony that has changed my life. It is the testimony of the persecuted Christians, our brothers and sisters who, because of being Christians, see their rights violated, their lives are in danger. Brothers and sisters of ours who, because of having responded to God's love, that love which God has for each one of us, have had to shed their blood and lose their lives. When we speak about religious persecution, it is a phenomenon more widespread than we imagine. Today, in the 21st century, 350 millions of our brothers and sisters for being Christians, for having responded to the love that God has for each one of us, are in danger. They are mistreated and even obliged to shed their blood in order not to betray the one who gave his life for our salvation. This is taking place in more than 40 countries. Each year, 105,000 brothers and sisters of ours die for being Christians, for their faith. Christians are the minority, mostly persecuted nowadays. 75% of the people who don't have religious freedom are followers of Christ, of our Lord. Every five minutes, a Christian in some part of the world is killed. But what brings this about? What are the motives that lead them to have to give up their lives? Well, there are countries where dictatorial regimes exist. That is, countries where the dictators decide what is permitted and what is not countries where there is no freedom, and so to speak about religious freedom is a utopia. In the case of China, for example, North Korea, Cuba, there is also religious persecution due to a twisted instrumentalization of religion. That means that religion is used as an excuse just to respond to other interests that are generally motivated by power or money. This happens in countries where, for the most part, the religion is Islamic. The third motive of religious persecution is the ideology of a belligerent secularism that does not want there to be a living of the faith on a public level. In other words, they want to reduce faith to a private level. They don't want Christians to step outside of the sacristy. I would like to speak about what I have learned from the persecuted Christians during my numerous visits to different countries. I have learned that we should not be ashamed to say that we are Christians, that we should not be ashamed of our faith. Faith is a gift that we have received freely. Faith is the greatest gift that the Lord has given to us. In the countries where Christians are persecuted, they are not ashamed to be Christians. They are not ashamed to give a public testimony to their faith. I would like to share a story, a testimony that has marked my own life deeply and that makes me question myself and ask myself, how is my own daily commitment to the Lord? This is something that took place in Egypt. A young boy, 16 years of age, gave testimony of his faith until the end. He gave his life for love of the Lord. He arrived at school one day. The Christians in Egypt as they're not ashamed of their faith, they wear large crucifixes and even have the cross tattooed on their wrists. Why on their wrists? Well, because that is the place where our Lord was nailed. And while this boy was in class, when he moved, the cross could be seen beneath his shirt. So, as he moved, the cross was seen. The teacher who was giving the class interrupted what he was doing to tell him to hide the cross. 
that he should cover the cross he had tattooed because it offended him, the teacher, it was bothering him. Of course, the cross is a motive of scandal for those who have not yet discovered God's love. The cross, which is the symbol of the greatest love, the cross, which is natural for a Christian, becomes for them a scandal. That young boy, instead of being taken aback, of being afraid, instead of being ashamed of his faith, he looked his teacher in the eyes and said, Why must I hide the cross? Why are you upset by the cross? The cross is the most beautiful symbol of love. On the cross, our Lord is crucified with his arms wide open. He is embracing the whole of humanity. The Lord has died for you. So I am not going to renounce the cross. I am not going to hide it because he, like I said, loves you. He loves you. Me ama a mí, concretamente. Esto provocó un gran revuelo en la clase. This provoked an outburst in class and the students and teacher took the boy outside and beat him up so badly that he died. He gave his life for his faith to be coherent to it because he knew that the biggest gift he had ever received was the gift of faith. This young boy knew and witnessed to this with his life, to the last moment of his life, that God loves us. He loves us so much, just as we are, with our weaknesses, our limitations, also with our gifts and the graces that he gives us each day. This is just one example of many of our persecuted brothers and sisters. It is an example, a testimony that I wanted to share, a testimony that makes each one of us question ourselves as to our own commitment to the Lord and how we respond to the love that he has for each one of us.